How's it going guys? Welcome to another episode. This is a slightly different episode. Um, I have my uh, camera woman behind the camera doing an amazing job right there. And we're gonna keep it moving because this is going to be an unboxing uh, and a first impressions of something that I've wanted to actually get my hands on for quite a while. And this is the Space Mouse Wireless. I am pretty sure you guys must have seen this in different places, uh, maybe not at work, but in some places that if you actually work in 3D, because they are everywhere, they're mostly used by AutoCAD users. But I feel like 3D um, artists like ourselves, animators, can actually use these mice to animate. I've used one of these uh, before um, for a little while and rotating in Maya with this is incredibly smooth. So we're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna give you my first impressions and then we're gonna jump on the computer, I'm gonna set it up and then I'm gonna tell you guys how to use this stuff the way I used to use it back in the day because I feel like there's a use for this and I think you guys should see it. Let's get to it. Cool, so let's get this unboxed. So first impressions overall of the box is that um, it looks actually quite nice. It seems to have like a carrying case, which is really, really cool. Um, it claims to have superior 3D navigation. Yeah, it has a case, easy to use and wireless freedom. So no wires, always a win. So let me just try and actually get this out. Okay. Whew, that was a really strong sticker. Let's take the sticker off. And open this bad boy. All right. We have a quick start guide. So put the USB dongle, turn it on, install, and then it has some instructions. All right. And then we have a little tiny carrying case. <laughs> look at that. Looks quite cute. Yeah, look at that. Looks quite nice. Carrying case. And then we have a USB. This is the old type of USB, not US, USB type C. So I'm guessing that is just to charge. And then we have the 3D connection USB dongle. So inside of here, we have the mouse. So how does this look? Ooh, shiny. Can you guys see that? Looks really cool. And it has a certain weight to it as well. It feels like it's going nowhere. I'm guessing because it's wireless and you won't need to put it on your desk and you need to kind of like, yeah, use it. You don't want it to actually be moving about. So it's actually pretty cool. It feels quite premium. It's really nice. Wait, let me just take it off. Close the carrying case. So I'm gonna be using it. Yeah, this feels really, really cool. And I didn't anticipate this. It has like a left and right uh, button. So I'm guessing while you're using it, you can use the buttons as a shortcut. So that's all the contents of the Space Mouse Wireless. Carrying case, really, really cool. Little mouse, really hefty, nice cable and USB dongle. Now that you actually unboxed it, I think you guys probably feel just like myself. We need to test it out. We need to connect it and see what we get with this guy here. So let's do that next. How's it going, guys? So here is the best angle that I could find to show you this little guy here that uh, we're gonna test today. So what I've done so far is actually connect the dongle to my computer and then install the driver, the 3D connection driver on my Mac. And then I went ahead and basically plugged it in just to see if it works. Now, this is something really cool because as soon as you actually power it, I don't know if you guys can see it right now. Let me just see if I can actually show you. As soon as you power it, this happens. Can you see that? So cool. Everything turns blue and looks so dope. 
Look at that. And it just stays on for a little bit just to tell you that it's on and then it switches off. So it's not annoying. It's not an LED that stays on, which is exactly my vibe. It just like turns on just to tell you that it's on and now you're ready to work, right? And it's pretty cool to see it. Anyways, that is what I wanted to show you. Now it's on and we're ready to work with it. Now, another thing that we need to talk about is this trainer, 3D connection trainer. As soon as I install the driver, you get this window here on the right and you have this button called trainer. This opened up as soon as the trainer came about. And then you actually get, so for you to train your hand about the sensitivity of it all, because it is very sensitive. So you can barely, you barely touch it and it's already doing it. And I have a feeling that as soon as you get used to this, it's gonna feel like second nature because you don't, really don't have to move much. Right now I'm actually gonna move, I'm moving the teapot up and down. And I, as you can see by my hand, I'm not really doing much. So the fatigue that you're gonna get from this is gonna be very minimal, I think. So that's up and down, that's step one. Also, there's a guy that talks to you, pretty cool. See that? <laughs> pretty cool. So this is left and right. Feels good. And obviously the more you push it, the more it moves. Really nice. By the way, I'm actually using a mouse and this, right? So I have my mouse here on this side, and then I'm using this guy here on my left-hand side. This is how we normally use these guys. Yeah. It's very sensitive. funny how like I feel like much more connected with the uh, 3d model just by looking at this teapot I feel like I'm I'm almost like grabbing it with this thing and like like looking around it I understand why architects would use this to see 3d models all the time let me see let's play the game why not ha made it failing so hard right now <laughs> look at this oh can I make it can I make it cool okay so we're done with the trainer let's open Maya and move on to the next bit because we want to see how this actually translates into Maya right so let's see that oh wait a second before we go into Maya we have a 3d viewer Okay, so it takes a little bit of, of time for you to get the hang of it. It feels very much like um, something that you have to kind of like just use for a while to train your mind to not actually to use this axis. Do you remember the first time they used Maya? Like when you actually like move things in 3D and you change axis or you change controller and you have to go through like rotates and translates and it feels like it's mind-bending. I kind of feel like it's the same thing here. You kind of like have to get used to, to the controller bit by bit. But once you do and you realize how sensitive it is, it feels natural. Yeah, I think I'm slowly getting the hang of it, but it will take me a few days to get the gist of this. So this is another good um, good example. There's also a puzzle game here that I'm guessing you can use to actually train yourself to move the mouse. And there's collage. What is a collage? You can just like see pictures in 3D. Okay, cool. So let's, let's hop onto Maya, see what you get with this guy. And you can tell that this doesn't look like your regular zoom in and zoom out of the character. This is basically this guy here making it all so smooth when going in and out of the character. So I can still connect, select the, the, my controllers. I can map the W, the E and the R uh, and maybe I can actually cycle them with these two buttons, right? 
So if I actually have that, I can quickly go here and like start moving my controllers. And then if I wanna see more details, I can zoom in a little bit on the character, try kind of like to see more or see less. Once again, it's very sensitive, still trying to get the, just the, the gist of it. But as you can tell, like this is a good way of you analyzing your character as you are animating. And it feels, I can tell that over time, as you get better at kind of like manipulating this, that you probably would feel like second nature. It's almost like, you know animators that animate with a Wacom? Whenever you grab that pen and you start animating with a Wacom, it feels completely alien because you're trying to actually like grab the controls with a pen and then you have a mouse on the other side that you're trying to kind of like use to kind of like manipulate your controllers, just like this. The only difference is that instead of a Wacom, you get this guy, right? So now you're actually trying to kind of like do the same thing, rotating 3D and getting closer and, 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 and further way but just with this guy and then as you go along you kind of like get to analyze your character and then make sure that your eyes are correct and so talking about buttons um, you can actually map this button to whatever application you want in this case Maya to actually do whatever you want so in this case you actually have undo and that's fine and you have like different selections but you could potentially like map this one button to do different things. So have your transforms, your rotates and your scale. And the same thing if I actually press the right button. So I'm pressing this button right here. Um, you can change the topography of like the application. In this case, in Maya doesn't do anything, but you have to map it specifically to Maya. And the way you do it is by using that application that I showed you guys in the beginning, by going to preferences and then selecting application and then starting to actually map things to this button when I click it. Do I want a radial selection? What does the selection do? And map those things to buttons. So that is basically how you actually use this mouse. My first impressions are that this is really, really cool. I feel like it has a lot of potential for you, for all those that want to use it in this way and that you can just like almost feel that 3D element of your character and going in and out. But that it does require quite a lot of training, just like we're using Wacom uh, or we're using a, a Cintiq to animate because this is so sensitive going up and down and to the sides, in and out and stuff. And being in 3D can be a little bit disorienting. So if you're gonna get one of these, they are relatively inexpensive but they are really, really useful for everybody that wants to kind of like move away their keyboard aside like I'm doing right now. My keyboard is actually away and you can just use one of these and one of these and then you can just animate away as you go through. You can actually scrub through your timeline and you can actually animate as you go through. Sometimes you have to use keypads, but because this is so tiny and it has so minimal, it only has two buttons. Now, I'm gonna review some uh, another one later that has like keyboard shortcuts. And in those, you can definitely get rid of the keyboard because you have everything in your hand. But for this guy, most likely, at some point, you're gonna have to come back to the keyboard, select something, go back to this guy, and then rotate and select and animate, right? But you spend so much time in one frame, especially as you're setting up your poses, that it's perfect for you to go in and then start manipulating your pose. And with this, you feel so much more organic. Um, the 3D element of it all feels really organic. So really, really cool overall. Once again, thank you very much to 3D Connection for hooking me up with this mouse. Really awesome stuff. I'll be using it in future videos for other things. Uh, and yeah, keep tuned for that. I'll try and do a review later on, a full-fledged review of what I think of this. But this, I think, should be my first thoughts, unboxing, and all that goodness. So you guys, perhaps, if you're in the fence of buying one of these, can go ahead and do the thing because they are pretty useful depending on the situation, depending on the user, and depending on what you're gonna use it for, right? And that's all I had for you guys today. As always, have a great day and stay well, stay safe, peace.